how a blind and deaf Neanderthal lived to be gray. One-armed, one-eyed and lame Neanderthal from Iraq turns out to be deaf. Lifelong care in Shanidar One Cave, first Neanderthal's hospital? Generally speaking, Neanderthals are not believed to have much empathy, but that is far from the case. Human relatives sometimes cared for sick relatives for decades. Shanidar One did not have an easy life. Whatever happened to him as a child, it crippled his body. They removed one of his forearms, which had become useless. He limped, was probably visually impaired, and suffered numerous other injuries. His skull and facial bones were broken, and his further development following the injuries was not normal. Shanidar remained weak, had multiple disabilities, and was probably largely, if not completely, deaf, as researchers now report in the journal PLOS One. In the Pleistocene world, where humans were still on the menu for several representatives of the megafauna, these were not necessarily good conditions for survival. The amazing thing about Shanidar, however, is that he died at the age of over 40. 50,000 years ago, he would have been considered an old man in Iraq where his remains were found. Researchers can only find one explanation for how he was able to live to such an old age. His clan, his family, his group must have looked after him his entire life. They provided him with food, looked after him, helped him with transport. This does not necessarily correspond to the image that many still have of the supposedly primitive Neanderthal. Numerous finds document the caring nature of the Neanderthals. Researchers know better. They know that Neanderthals not only cared for the injured, but also looked after the physically and mentally disabled in their midst. Numerous finds document their caring for all members of their group, often until the inevitable end. In 2009, scientists presented a study on a skull found at the Cima de los Huesos archaeological site in the Sierra de Atapuerca in northern Spain, which illustrated this impressively. The skull of a child found there, known as Cranium 14, showed clear deformities that indicated both visible deformations and, with a high degree of probability, mental impairments, and similar to Shanidar, extensive hearing loss. He is just one of several Neanderthals who showed deformities or bone deformations in the skull area and yet were supported by their community. The community of Cima de los Huesos also cared for the child Cranium 14 until his death, not the only indication that the archaic human group of the Neanderthals apparently lived a life of unconditional inclusion. In the case of Shanidar I, whose remains were found in the Kurdish part of Iraq as early as 1957, study co-author Eric Trinkhaus recognizes one thing above all, the deep humanity of these often reviled, archaic people. Trinkhaus and his co-author, Sebastian Villat, have now subjected Shanidar I to new, more in-depth examinations using modern methods. They discovered bony growths in the ear canals of the skull, which indicate very extensive, possibly complete deafness. In times when evening walks were a thrill, not only thanks to rhinos, elephants, and buffalo, but also thanks to 190 kilogram saber-tooth cats, 360 kilogram lions, 800 kilogram bears, and lion-sized hyenas, surviving with sensory impairments without assistance was probably next to impossible. But Neanderthals cared for the sick and physically handicapped. Perhaps this was part of their culture, from the Middle East to Spain. The one-armed, one-eyed and lame Neanderthal from Shanidar Cave was also deaf, scientists have discovered. However, despite numerous illnesses and injuries, he managed to live to 45 years. Such finds indicate that Neanderthals did not abandon the elderly and disabled, but cared for them until their death. The famous Neanderthal from Shanidar Cave in Iraqi Kurdistan had numerous injuries and health problems, including deafness. Scientists have discovered growths in his ear canals that likely caused his hearing loss. In 1957, a research team led by archaeologist Ralph Selecki discovered 10 Neanderthal skeletons in Shanidar Cave in Iraqi Kurdistan, buried by their relatives about 50,000 years ago. Many of these Neanderthals had suffered from mutilation and disease during their lifetime, but one skeleton, Shanidar I, was especially remarkable. This Neanderthal lived for about 45 years, with the average life expectancy of Neanderthals being 22 to 23 years. Long before his death, his right arm was amputated above the elbow, and the rest of it showed signs of fractures. 
The injuries probably resulted in partial paralysis of the right side of the body, which caused deformation of the lower limbs. Most likely, the Neanderthal limped noticeably and experienced pain with each step. The left foot shows traces of a fracture and severe arthritis of the joints. In addition, he suffered from bone dystrophy. The skeleton also showed signs of Forestier's disease, diffuse idiopathic hyperostosis of the skeleton, ossification of ligaments and tendons. Since the disease is diagnosed mainly after 40 years, its development is associated with the aging of connective tissue. The disease leads to stiffness of movement and local pain in the joints. In addition, the Neanderthal once received a strong blow to the face, damaging the left eye socket. Scientists believe that this could have led to partial or complete blindness. In a new study, a team from Washington University in St. Louis carefully examined the skull of a Neanderthal and found exostoses in his ear canals, benign bone cartilage growths on the surface of the bone. Their appearance is usually caused by trauma or a long-term inflammatory process. Without surgical intervention, the bone tissue continues to grow, which eventually leads to partial or complete hearing loss. His deafness, more than his leg or other handicaps, would have made him easy prey for the ubiquitous predators. His survival depended on his social group, explains anthropology professor Eric Trinkhaus, one of the study's authors. Despite numerous injuries and illnesses, the Neanderthal lived a surprisingly long life by the standards of that time. Scientists believe that this was possible only thanks to the help and care of his fellow tribesmen. As we study the Neanderthals, they continue to present new surprises. For example, they were not at all alien to the craving for beauty. In March of this year, an international group of archaeologists discovered a raven bone with six notches at the Zaskolnaya VI Paleolithic site in Crimea. These notches, scientists are sure, speak of the aesthetic perception of the Neanderthals who lived in Crimea at that time and their idea of order. An analysis of Neanderthals' dental plaque revealed that they used antibiotics and painkillers even before they were invented. They chewed poplar bark, which contained salicylic acid, the active component of aspirin, and took penicillin. They also probably had close contact with the ancestors of modern humans and could even kiss them. A bacterium characteristic of humans was found in the microflora of Neanderthals. Neanderthals also did not forget about hygiene. Characteristic grooves on the teeth indicate that they used toothpicks, possibly made from thin bird bones, and tried to remove diseased teeth. Caring for fellow tribesmen was a distinctive feature not only of the Neanderthals, but also of their predecessors, the Heidelberg people. This is what the results of a 2010 study show. The authors of the publication made their conclusions based on the structure of the lumbar pelvic bones of a Heidelberg man who lived in what is now Spain about half a million years ago. The most important difference between this find and other similar human remains is that it indicates an unusually old age at which the man died, 45 years. The remains of primitive people who died at such an advanced age have never been found by archaeologists before. A study of bone fragments showed that the man could not stand upright and may have used a cane-like device to walk. In addition to a severe curvature of the lumbar spine and spondylolisthesis, Elvis, as archaeologists nicknamed him, also suffered from Bostrup's disease, a pathological convergence of the spinous processes of the vertebrae. Scientists are almost certain that the man constantly suffered from severe pain in the lower back and therefore was completely dependent on his fellow tribesmen, unable to obtain food on his own.